put that light. I can't see. It wants to go a little bit darker on that bed. Yeah. Okay. Are you okay? It's okay, baby. Hey Farm Fam, welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new, welcome. So today's video is gonna be kind of like educational and experience of something that's going on at the farm right now. It's not a very happy video. So really quickly, I wanna get you guys up to speed to what's actually going on. So as you guys know, our new rescue little piggy, we've just been calling him little pig mr pig that's going to be basically his name we call him mr pig it just kind of works for him he's a little tiny pig um, but he has got a big personality so mr pig works i know a ton of you guys were asking what we finally named him so that's pretty much what his name is is mr pig or little pig so basically mr pig has lost movement or the capability of movement in his hind legs. So he does have some paralysis in his back legs. So what happened basically was the first night, which you guys won't see that on film because I didn't film any of it. We were just tending to him to try to figure out everything that was going on. So right here, this gate right here, the morning of the night that he first had the paralysis of his legs, he was sticking his arm through this bottom like area of this gate and um, we needed to put something right there so that he wasn't able to get out. So we put a small water trough right there and it was pretty late at night, it was like 10 o'clock. Um, it was dark out, but he does have his light here in his pen, so he was able to see. So Mike lightly put the trough over into his pen, but it was just like a freak accident and it spooked him. So he just quickly like scurried off, but in the process, something went wrong. But then his two back legs no longer were able to help him move, so he just scooted away and shrieked in pain. From the start, I thought this was a syndrome called Dippity Pig Syndrome. Um, you can Google it if you need more information on it. It's not really widely researched. I don't know a whole bunch about it either, but it can be induced by stress, where basically they get a temporary paralysis of their hind legs. So throughout the experience of this video, you will see that I do believe that it is um, a Dippity Pig, and I'm following the protocol um, of Dippity Pig, where we have to wait and see if um, the paralysis stays for 72 hours so you guys will see that but I just wanted to set up the stage for you guys so you could understand kind of where we're at so you will see me treating this as dippy pig in the beginning to further on where we get our final result of basically what's happened to little pig with his paralysis so I want to do this video as an educational experience for those other pig owners that have experienced this um, even my search of trying to find research for this there wasn't a lot of research on the internet for this so um, I wasn't able to watch a lot of other experiences so I want to put this on for other pig owners and just something educational for you guys to watch as well because freak accidents like this can happen on any farm so I wanted to just bring you guys along the experience. So now this is now and he's eating but as you can see his back, rude. His back is still dipped in his back legs aren't working so we're at like the eight or nine hour mark maybe and this can go to at least like 24 hours up to, up to like 48 to 72 hours so it's just keeping him comfortable luckily today is not very sunny it's kind of like an overcast day we have darker clouds so he won't get too hot in here or anything like that since he can't really like move around but he's just still like kind of like immobile we're about to move his water closer to him now and also i brought over this liniment gel so a lot of people use this and like um, lidocaine in aloe vera and stuff like that to help with uh, soreness so last night we gave him benadryl and now we are going to just put this on him it's topical it's just going to help for sore muscles and joint pain relief so that's exactly what he needs all right chickens enough drinking slowly so he can like slightly just like wobble himself around, but it is painful for him. So we wanted to get as close as possible. It's okay, little pig. Yay. bottom lip it's so cute and pink they drink like a straw poor guy thirsty. he's a thirsty pig and now back to grain 
Y'all good, buddy? Besides, what's going on with you? <laughs> Poor guy. So, the uh, dippity pig syndrome is very painful for them. So, he's obviously grunting a lot because he doesn't feel very good. Mike walked up to him really slowly and is just kind of making him feel comfortable right there because if he tries to like run away fast, he obviously can't and it is painful for him. Oh, yay, a happy pig. Little pig. He's trying to make you feel better. We don't want you to be a dippity pig anymore. You're such a sweet pig. So we're just getting around like his hind end area because that's where it would be painful since the hind end is what's drooping down and his legs are dragging. So it's really interesting because it literally is like a paralysis of their hind end and there's not terribly too much research done about it so it's very interesting you know there's re no real like treatment for it to basically just wait it out and get them to be as comfortable as possible just working on this side now okay. all right all right all right we're listening to you it's okay Guys, this is so heartbreaking because it's just like you can't really do anything for him. And, you know, it's kind of just like a waiting game and it's like terrible for them. And he's obviously gets really frustrated because he can't walk. So it's really, it's really sad. Yeah, he's quiet. So his back legs get hung up underneath him so that's when he starts to get in more pain is when the one leg will get stuck under the other leg you tap it out for right now it's tiring huh mm, poor guy so as you can see that leg so whatever leg he's like technically laying on will kind of get stuck up underneath so then that's when it causes him pain so then we have to kind of like try to finagle his leg to not be underneath his belly, but like sitting kind of normal, I'm sorry. So going right to Google and giving you the exact definition of what dippity pig is. So the primary cause of dippity appears to be stress. It is not clear whether the stress is external or internal in nature or whether it can be self-induced. External stress could include a pig show, a trip to the vet, the introduction of a new pig or owner, a violent thunderstorm or sudden deviation in normal routine. So that is the cause of it being stressed. Now there is other um, correlation to dippity pig also being caused by exposure to sun. So that's also can be called like bleeding back syndrome where they'll get lesions, almost like a really bad sunburn like we would get as humans. And then it causes them a lot of pain and then the same effects will happen. So we aren't seeing that type of dippity pig um, symptoms which the internet also says that you don't always see that with that because that's just something that can cause dippity pig is also the presence of a really bad sunburn so we are thinking that this is stress induced because the first night that this actually happened he was perfectly fine the water trough got put into his pen and then immediately it was a loud shriek it was the loudest scream I've heard from a pig because our pigs will often like scream like Penelope if she doesn't like what you're doing to her just because they're very vocal but it was a loud scream and then Stewie screamed as well because um, he was probably just like frightened by the scream and then all of a sudden Mr. Pig wasn't able to use his hind legs um, and he had like a hunched back presence to him so if we refer back to the symptoms and signs of Dippity Pig they do say that they can vary in character and severity from pig to pig there are some certain definite symptoms they include but not necessarily all at once um, a sensitivity to being touched on the back end of the pig, sometimes to the point where the pig squeals when touched. A hunkered down pig stance with the tail tucked between the back legs and clamped to the body. Weakness of or inability to use the back legs to the point of falling down, pain, restlessness, and distress. So we are experiencing those symptoms. Um, not necessarily the sensitivity to being touched because we're not really touching him a lot because I don't want to hurt him. 
So he definitely has a hunker down and the lack of being able to use his back legs. So what they actually call this is a paralysis of his hind end. So it's a temporary paralyzation of his back legs so that he can't use them right now. So I have read that um, it's something neurological. I don't know, there's not exactly like so much research to get like definite answers of this. And also it is, pretty common though but it's also known that there's no real treatment so your vet may not even know exactly what to do so the withhold period before we get into the experience what we're going through is about 24 to 72 hours that they can experience the dibbity pig syndrome where they can't use their legs so at that point after 72 hours we would then call the vet but for now we are just following all protocol that I have read and researched to try to ease his pain and get him to that mark of where the uh, high and leg muscles or whatever is going on will work again so it's been about another eight hours and he's still laying down he drank a lot of water he moved his position a little bit so there's that but he's not doing much he's still got the thing going on but we're you know we're only like 16 hours in so we'll see probably in like the next 10 hours kind of if he starts to improve a little bit but like I said it can take up to 72 hours so we're just kind of monitoring and then we'll do Benadryl again tonight so we're at about 20 hours now he has still a hard time moving around. We've kind of just helped him just move from the area where he was over there where the water bowl is at. Um, he was over in that area, but he doesn't really move much to urinate. So we like to get him out of the spot where he urinates so that he's not just laying in his own pee. So we're gonna feed him again now and see if he's a little bit more motivated to sit up. I will say last night and this morning, he was a little bit more motivated to sit up as far as like um, like his front legs were on the ground, mostly. Now he's probably just wore out and he's tired and frustrated, but we're gonna do another dose of Benadryl tonight and hope that tomorrow is a little bit better. It is technically day let's say two we're going on day two here he's moved better so maybe he's getting it figured out or maybe it's not as painful so he's able to move a little bit more he's getting closer to his feed bowl because he obviously wants to be fed it's morning feeding time so cute i feel so bad for the little guy so as you can see this is how he's moving around poor guy i know it hurts so bad Get you some food. There you go. Day two, he's still not moving around the best. But I think a little bit better because he has scooted over here. So my theory, hypothesis, which I'm not 100% correct, is that he's not in as much pain, so he's able to move. So I'm hoping that since we will be coming up to the 48-hour mark tonight that maybe he'll have more improvements so sad so there's really no treatment like i've been telling you guys and if we do go past closer to that that 72 hour mark i will call the vet to see what our next steps are but as for now it's kind of just like a waiting game and keeping him out of pain as much as possible let's get this a little closer to you dude poor guy again moving the water closer to him And it makes me happy that he still wants to eat and drink because those would be signs that he's way too stressed or something else is going on. Um, I've read a ton about this and typically when they have dippity, they will still eat and drink. So there he goes, yay. Here, it's all good, buddy. So if he it wasn't eating or drinking, we might be a little bit more worried that this is something else. But it's showing all the telltale signs so far that that's what this is. We are approaching the 48 hour mark. Came in to bring him something good to eat. Hi, what are you doing? Look, I brought watermelon. You want some watermelon? 
It's okay, buddy. I know. Look, it tastes good. Oh, it's good. I feel like he's in so much pain right now that. Yummy. Uh oh, he dropped it. Okay, let's put some in his bowl so it's easier for him. He's eating it out of his bowl. I think he's a little bit confused what it even was. Yeah, we'll put another piece in there for you. He has a particular way that he likes to eat this. He doesn't really like when I hand it to him, and he doesn't really like to eat it off the plate, but he does like to eat it out of his food bowl. Yummy. He's definitely still in pain. I was hoping that he'd be a little bit more improved by now, since we are getting up to that 48 hour mark. But we still have a lot of time left that he can improve. He has moved around a lot today though, which is good. So I'm thinking that he's not in as much pain. He was yesterday because he literally just stayed like kind of stagnant in one spot yesterday. But I just wanted to give him something to cheer him up a little bit. We're gonna do Benadryl again tonight. I'm gonna show you guys how we give him that when we give that when we give that to him. And then hopefully tomorrow we'll be better. I'm gonna give Stewie some. And some watermelon. Good. He's so good. Mm. Buddy, you want some food? Oh, I didn't even put it in there yet. Let me fill it up. There you go. <laughs> Maybe we'll get the legs back tomorrow, okay? We gotta work on not scaring you so much. Enjoy your dinner. Trying to get comfortable, so he's just done eating. He's gonna move his stuff. You wanted to get out of your way? Oh, poor guy. <laughs> get the last couple more souls of feed. Little pig, when are you gonna get better? I'm so, so hoping and praying that by tonight. Good boy. What are you doing? I definitely do like where he's laying today. It's more in the middle of his pen. So it's not on the outers like he wanted to stay yesterday. This keeps him completely out of the sun. So I'm more happy about that. He's got his water there. And it's close enough for him to be able to get a drink. Seems a little bored. He's so used to being able to walk around. I can see how this could be really frustrating for him. I'm sorry, pig. Why are you tipping it over? I wonder why he's doing this. He's bored maybe and just looking for something to do. Look at your muddy face. You look like a pig in mud now. Is this what you are? Is this what you wanted? You want to play in the mud? Okay, so it's feeding time. I want to just see really quick if he can walk. No, nope. here we go. Come on, buddy, try a little bit. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and push it towards him. Hoping that tomorrow we show more improvement. 
I was hoping by tonight, but that's not happening. So we'll check on him once more for tonight once we give him the Benadryl. Gonna fill up his water again. He kept dumping it out today like two or three times. So we'll go ahead and fill it up and then come back in a little bit and give him his Benadryl to go to bed. Guys, we are at the 72 hour mark. A little frustrating because no change. He's still not able to use his back legs. Same thing that we're doing. We're gonna push the water towards him, make sure he's got enough water for today. And we'll see what happens tomorrow in the morning. Hoping that we have some type of recovery tomorrow as tomorrow will be um, the fourth full day, I guess. So, I don't know. Good piggy. Drink your water. He's still eating and drinking, which is good signs as far as all of this. But I really wish he was starting to use those hind legs again. So... A little frustrating, frustrated for him. I just had to be like this now. But we'll do another Benadryl tonight, and hopefully tomorrow morning we have some signs of improvement. So, it is now technically going on like day four, and it's the first day after the first 72 hours. So like I said, following online protocol, we would wait the first 72 hours, and then we would get some vet assistance, so basically, we are loading up Mr. Pig. We're getting him right now. We are moving the truck over here. We're putting him in the back seat because obviously his back legs are immobile and we don't want to stick him into a cage just because of the ease of getting him in and out. So he's going in the back seat of my truck and we are thinking that he needs to get some x-rays or something like that possible. I talked to some people that are really well versed in pigs and they also suggested that at this point it's probably a good idea to get some imaging done on him like x-rays so called the vet we're working so we are hoping that this is a easy we're hoping that this is a um, as least possible stressful thing for him it's gonna be stressful in general but rather than doing a farm call it's best if we actually bring him there to get good accurate x-rays so we gotta get him into the truck. Um, still same thing today, same as last night as you guys have been seeing. No real improvement or anything like that, so it's time for the vet. And I didn't want to have to bring him to the vet just because it's so stressful for them, but obviously we have to do what's best for him, so here we are going to the vet. And we'll put him right here in this back. He is right back here. He's on a blanket tarp. So we just have like about a 20, 30 minute drive. And hopefully he won't be too scared. And then we'll get there and everything will all be good. <laughs> I'm just glad that he's in the truck. This was like a part that I was dreading, but it worked out. Just pulled up to the vet. I went inside, told him that we were here. Um, we made it successfully. He grunted here and there, but it was really a smooth ride here. So happy about that. I'm trying to keep him as least stressed as possible. So um, the techs are going to come out when they are completely ready for us so that we don't even have to like wait in there at all. Um, and just like when the doctor is ready and then we'll bring him in and then can be seen pretty much as soon as we get in there. So trying to make this as happy as can be because I don't want to make any new symptoms because pigs can get really stressed out. So the vet just came out here and said that he definitely still has feeling in his legs, so that's good. So now we're gonna do an x-ray. Your blanket's so messy now. Smooth as possible for him. That wasn't that bad. No, he, I it thought hurts he was gonna scream worse. So gonna be... <laughs> it sounds weird, but if you scratch his belly, he'd probably relate. Okay. He's so stressed right now. I know. that light, I can't see. It wants to go a little bit darker on that bed. Yeah. Okay. Are you okay? It's okay, baby. 
It's okay, baby. It's okay. It's okay. You don't want to your eyes and so much soul. Mm -hmm. It's okay. It's okay. So we are back from the vet now. Is everything okay, pig? Okay, so as you guys saw, he was getting his x rays, and there was no obvious immediate cure. And basically, it is not Dippity Pig Syndrome. So, like I said, we were treating this as Dippity Pig Syndrome, and the vet also said that he would have originally thought maybe that it was Dippity Pig, but since it's gone past the 72 hours with no improvement, we are definitely ruling out Dippity Pig Syndrome. So, we did the imaging. Nothing like fractures were seen, which is good. Nothing major in his legs were seen, which is good but then it leaves us questioning what's going on with mr pig and basically so far right now the diagnosis is that he either has a pinched nerve in his back or a slip disc so the next course of action is that he was put on a steroid called prednisone and also was given a pain medication so where we're at right now is we will put him on the steroid for a week and the hopeful result will either it will help the nerve to unpinch or if it is a slip disc, it will reduce the inflammation and help the disc, I guess, realign, something like that. Um, so that's best case scenario right now. The doctor did mention if we don't see any improvement within a week's time that this could possibly be permanent. And then the two basic results after that would either be that he can't walk again or we would have to maybe explore the option of back surgery. So of course, both of those outcomes are less than ideal. We we're just gonna get there day by day and see how this goes. Um, and hopefully the steroids start to work for him as soon as possible. I am very hopeful that this will be what it takes. But this is as far as we have gotten so far and I will keep you guys updated on his journey. I will definitely let you guys know in a week's time where he's at with um, everything happening with the steroid and where we kind of go from here. But as of right now, he is still... He still has that paralysis in his back legs. It is hopeful though that this could be recoverable. He still has some feeling in those back legs and there's no fracture. We definitely will explore other options as well like chiropractic and things like that um, to try to help this if there is no um, desirable results after the week. So I really hope this video wasn't too like morbid or anything like that but I really want this to be educational for other pig pet owners and just you guys to keep you guys in the loop and give you an update on what's been going on with Mr. Pig. So, with that being said, of course, not the news that we really wanted to get. We were hoping that this was going to be a bit of an easier fix, but it's not. So, we just got to let it run its course until we can figure something out here in a week's time. So, make sure that you are subscribed to my channel down below so that you don't miss any of these videos. And I will see you in the next one.